syndesmotic injuries of the ankle. What is the function of the syndesmosis? The syndesmosis gives stability to the ankle. It resists external rotation, axial and lateral displacement of the talus. Syndesmotic injuries of the ankle can be challenging in the diagnosis and in the treatment. It may not be easy to obtain and maintain reduction of the syndesmosis. Approximately 50% of the patients with operatively treated supination external rotation type fracture of the ankle have syndesmotic injury on stretch radiographs intraoperatively. Anatomic reduction of the syndesmosis is crucial for a good clinical outcome. Restoration of the normal fibrillar length and alignment and obtaining and maintaining alignment of the syndesmosis significantly impact the functional outcome of the patient. My reduction of the tibiofibular syndesmosis is not uncommon and it can occur in up to 30% of patients. Fluoroscopy and direct visualization and reduction of the syndesmosis could improve the anatomic reduction. Synesmotic injuries are common. You find it in sports injuries or in ankle fractures, such as supination extender rotation type 4, pronation extender rotation, and pronation abduction injury. It does not happen with supination abduction injury. In this injury, you will see vertical fracture of the medial malleolus and the talus will go medially. Syndesmotic fixation probably is needed more with an ankle fracture that has a high fibular fracture and a deltoid ligament injury than an ankle fracture that has fracture of the fibula with medial malleolus fracture. The higher the fracture in the fibula, the more incidence of syndesmotic disruption and the need for syndesmotic fixation. In fact, a high fibular fracture plus deltoid injury equals syndesmotic screw fixation. It means syndesmotic screw fixation is needed. How do you diagnose syndesmotic injury? You will find an unstable mortis. It can be evident or occult. Suspected. You need to suspect syndesmotic injuries in proximal fibular fracture, which is called Maisonnet fracture. Look at the disruption of the interosseous membrane and the syndesmosis. How do you do that? By looking at the ankle, get an x-ray. You also suspect it in a sports injury where there is a positive squeeze test. 20% of syndesmotic injuries of the ankle can be undetected on clinical examination. You will get stress x-rays. You also suspect it in spination external rotation type 2 that has fibular fracture. Provocative tests or the stress views are used in fibular fracture, supination external rotation type 2 to see if it is really a type 2 injury or if the injury is a type 4 and there is a hidden occult deltoid and syndesmotic injury. How do you do the provocative tests? to diagnose an occult injury of the ankle. You do the gravity test, or you do the abduction external rotation stress view, or you do weight-bearing film. In weight-bearing film, the dorsiflexion of the ankle can eliminate any errors on the medial side. Sometimes when the ankle is plantar flexed, the medial side looks widened 
but it is not a true widening. What do I look for in the x-rays to make sure I have syndesmotic disruption? Look for the tibiofibular clear space. Look for the tibiofibular overlap. And look for the widened medial clear space more than 5 mm. The tibiofibular clear space is probably the best radiologic measure because it's not affected by the position of the leg. If the syndesmosis is unstable, you need to fix it. It is the last part of ankle fracture fixation. You must have an atomic reduction of the syndesmosis. And before you fix the syndesmosis, you will need to evaluate the reduction of the syndesmosis. That can be done by direct inspection and reduction or by x-rays. You may need x-rays of the other side to assess accuracy of reduction of the syndesmosis intraoperatively. In surgery, how do you test the stability of the syndesmosis? You can use the cotton test, you can use bone hook or pull on the fibula by levering it out by a hemostat or by a fear or an elevator, or you can see the movement of the fibula, or you can do the abduction extender rotation test. You will do x-rays intraoperatively and check if the syndesmosis is stable or not and if it is reduced or not. So you want to restore the fibular length. You want to see if the medial clear space and tibiofibular overlap are okay or not. Make sure you don't have mortis instability, which is displacement of the talus out of the mortis. You want to restore the fibular length because that's key. The fibula must sit properly in the incisura. The morphology of the incisura is variable and that encourages malreduction. So if the incisura is shallow, the fibula can be pushed anteriorly, and if it is deep, it can be pushed posteriorly. And that can cause malreduction and malrotation. Synesmotic malreduction can occur from positioning of the reduction clamps. Anterior clamps can cause malreduction. Avoid translation of the fibula anteriorly when using anteriorly based clamps. Clamp placement in a neutral anatomical axis reduces syndesmotic mal reduction. While oblique placed clamps results in syndesmotic mal reduction, variation in the angulation of the reduction clamp and screw placement can cause iatrogenic syndesmotic malreduction and displaces the fibula in external rotation. Fixation of the fibula in as much a 30 degree of external rotation may go undetected using intraoperative fluoroscopy. The malreduction may not be clinically significant if it is minimal. However, it can be very significant if the mal reduction is significant. How do you fix the syndesmosis? Screws is supposed to be the gold standard for fixation, but it is no longer the gold standard. You can fix the syndesmosis by screws, by suture buttons, and by a variety of different techniques. Patients with suture buttons return to work early and less frequently need the implant removed. This is the controversy. There is no gold standard for the number of screws, the number of courtesies, the level of placement of the screws, the type of screws, 3-5 or 4-5. Another area of controversy is when the patient will put weight after fixation of an ankle fracture that needed syndesmotic screw fixation. I personally use 3-5 screws 
and rarely use four or five screws. And we actually use cross screws in severe situations. I also use a plate in mesonet fractures, not just the screws over the fibula. The screws have to go through a plate to help the stability of the screws. You must have an atomic reduction of the fibula as well as alignment. Achieving the fibula length can be a problem, especially if the fibula is comminuted. So in this situation, you need to fix the medial malleolus first, then restore the fibula length. How do you know that the fibula is out to length? The dime sign, the Shinton line, the uninterrupted subcortical line. The screw is rigid, it can break or it can loosen. The tight rope fixation avoids the problem of the rigid fixation, so it maintains the reduction while allows physiological movement of the fibula. But the tight rope has its own problems. So let's now go to the hardware removal. Is it necessary? I used to remove all syndesmotic screws, but now I don't remove them unless it is necessary for pain or stiffness. I make the patient walk on it around 10 to 12 weeks. 17% of the screws break, 13% are loosened, and 1.4% of the screws are removed for symptoms. The screws look bad on x-rays when they are broken or loosened, but there is no trouble from these screws. It doesn't cause a lot of trouble. So if you keep them, it's just an x-ray problem, but not a functional problem. If you leave the screws, or if you remove the screws, there is no difference in functional outcome between screw removal and non-removal. They found that when the syndesmosis is malreduced and then you remove the screws, the patient feels better and the movement gets better. Retained broken screws had a better functional outcome than the retained intact screws. Fixation of the posterior malleolus adequately stabilizes in this mouses. If the fragment is minimally displaced, the screws can be directed from anteriorly to posteriorly. If the fragment is large, you can fix it with a buttress plate posteriorly. The posterior malleolar fixation restored the stiffness to 70% and the syndesmotic screw fixation restored the stiffness to 40% compared to intact specimens. There is a strong association between obesity and loss of syndesmotic reduction. Obese patients 12 times more likely to lose syndesmotic reduction than non-obese patients. In regards to the syndesmotic injury, you will need to recognize it and fix it when the syndesmosis is unstable. Evaluate the reduction of the syndesmosis. Avoid mere reduction. Remove the syndesmotic screws only if needed. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.